Well, greetings to you in the name of Jesus. Um, I know the the title of the video may surprise some people, but let me profess it this way. I do believe in healing. I do believe in deliverance ministry and so forth. But there is a time and place for doing certain things. Um, I just recently came across uh, a news about a brother in northern part of India who was conducting uh, a healing crusade. I won't name the person. I will not name the location. Um, but, you know, we have to be wise when it comes to advertising certain things and saying certain things. Um, first of all, I will not use the word crusade. It has negative connotations. Uh, those of you who don't know the, the history behind crusades, please look it up. It's a bloody history. Um, you know, and if you read the scriptures, the, the, the way taught by Jesus is not a way of war or, you know, taking up the sword and um, it's not a political religion. So let's leave it to the religion of peace, P-I-E-C-E, -E, and let's focus on uh, what Jesus has taught us to preach the gospel, the good news of salvation to all mankind. Um, so I would not even call something a healing crusade because we're not told to go out and preach healing or just heal everybody. We're definitely told to go out and preach the gospel. And healing could be used as a mean to provide a sign for those who are being saved or people who are watching. Now, we have turned those gospel meetings where we are supposed to preach the gospel into healing crusades. I'm sorry. I think we need to correct ourselves, come back to the scripture, and look at what the scripture says about these things. I don't have anything written down. This is just, I'm just talking top of my head, the things that are coming to my mind. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive video on the subject. But if you study the Gospels carefully or the New, New Testament, um, the goal is not to just go and heal a bunch of people. Even the ones who follow Jesus, they received the healing, they went their way. Not many of them came back. And uh, yes, you will quote to me scriptures where they say, oh, whoever came to Jesus, Jesus healed everyone who came to him and so forth. Yes, but what was the primary goal of the Messiah coming into the world? is to save us from our sins. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. And he told his disciples to do what? To go and preach the gospel. So, um, as believers, I think it would be wise for us to just stick with what the scripture says about going and just proclaiming the gospel. Those who are not interested in the gospel, there's no point in, um, you know, doing miracles and healing or whatever for some people. Um... Think of it this way, okay? You don't know when you just meet a person up front, a face value, you don't know why that person is sick. It could be a lifestyle issue. And okay, you pray and say that person gets healed. But if they don't change their lifestyle, they'll again go and continue to be sick. And they'll say, oh, well, this guy prayed, nothing happened. Okay? It could be an actual demonic oppression. Now, why is that demonic oppression you know, are there, is there a sin in their life that they need to rectify? You know, there, there could be so many aspects that we need to look into before uh, we do certain things. So unless you have a clear guidance about whether a person should be receiving healing or not, I will not just go and jump ahead and just rebuke every demon under the sun and um, heal every single person that you see. Um, so let us be wise. You know, okay, yeah, if, if the Lord directs you and tells you, okay, well, this person, this issue, this is the reason, and I want you to pray and heal this person. May the name of the Lord be glorified. Do it. But I would not call a meeting healing crusade. Everybody just come, you know, we'll, we'll get healed. And all. I don't think Jesus came to just, just heal everyone and make everyone wealthy and all your problems in life will be gone and then you will enter the kingdom of God. I don't think that's what the Bible teaches. And I don't think we should be doing that. 
I have come across videos where I've seen preachers say, oh, I can, I, I can tell somebody in their bank account they're receiving 30,000 rupees or 30,000 whatever dollars. Um, and check your account, check your account right now. I mean, what, what on earth are we, are we teaching these believers? You know, this is false gospel. And I'm not saying, oh, but just because you're preaching healing and deliverance is false gospel. I'm just saying, let's be wise. Especially when there are laws in the land that are people are putting out to um, stop people from conducting these type of meetings. Uh, if we can't pick it up from the scripture, at least pick it up from the, the law of the land that says, don't do this kind of stuff. And then you will say, oh, well, they also forbid you from preaching the gospel. Well, we can't stop preaching the gospel, which is the good news. And not everyone has to accept. We don't have to do anything special to make gospel more attractive. It is what it is. And you take it, or, take it or leave it. We just preach the truth. People want to take it, they can take it. If they want to leave it, they can leave it. But I will request all brothers and sisters, especially in India, who are in the gospel work, Please stick to the word of God, stick to what the disciples and the apostles taught, and just preach the gospel, the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I think if we just stick to what the scripture says, we should be all right. All right. Um, we'll continue to pray for all the brothers and sisters working in different parts of the world who are preaching the gospel. It's a, it's a great work. Uh, may God continue to bless you every morning and night at least. Uh, me and my family, we spend time praying for the persecuted Christians around the world. So this is not coming out of just an off-the-cuff response. You know, we, I, I, I pray, we pray as a family, we pray for all the believers who are being persecuted. So um, it has obviously touched my heart. It's heartbreaking to know a brother in Christ who has been incarcerated. And there are many who are, you know, who are going through a difficult time. So let's continue to uphold these brothers and sisters in our prayers. And uh, may the Lord grant us wisdom to be um, wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. God bless you all.